Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be looking at two modules that can add significant visual elements to your game. The first is token magic, and the second is custom token animations. We'll be starting off with token magic and how you can use the macros that are already provided through the module, how you can use these in tandem with other automation modules such as DAE, the Cub module, or MIDI QOL, and then also how you can adjust them and create your own presets to use those automation modules. Starting with Token Magic, the first thing you want to do is go to the Compendium, search for Token Magic Portfolio right here, and you can look at all of the presets that have already been created for you. If you want, up above I'll put a link to where you can see a video where I've covered all of these presets and how they look in your game. After you've picked one that you like, you can just simply import it to your game by either right clicking, import entry, or drag it down to your macro bar. When testing these, it's also a good idea to grab the first one here, delete filters on selected, as this will clear all of the token magic filters on a single token. And you can see that right here. I apply the filter, and then I clear it off of the token. These same filters can also be applied to drawings, as well as to tiles. Token magic also has a list of preset effects for templates, which can be used by either directly interacting with one on the scene and going to special effects or by going into your token magic template settings and changing the effects for specific damage types or sizes of spells and then also going to overrides and creating specific instances where a special effect is applied if the spell has the certain name such as spirit guardians here i don't have a special effect but I am using a specific texture, one that is provided by JB2A Animations. Token Magic can also work really well with DAE. I find that without using a custom macro, it works best with spell effects that are going to wear off, as the spell effect will wear off at the same time the Token Magic effect wears off. So if I go to Effects, I can go to Edit Effect, create a new effect, which I have already done right here, Select Macro Token Magic, Custom, and then whenever you want from the list here. I'll be going over how we can add to this list of presets next. One of the things that's handy is that the macros that come packaged with Token Magic are very easy to edit. There are a long list of presets, but you might not find quite the one you're looking for. For example, here I have Glow, but it shifts between two shades of blue. Perhaps I want to change the colors that are present here. I can go to Edit Macro and change the hex codes that are present, and this will change how the macro effect is going to look. There are a number of tools online that you can use to find the hex codes for specific colors. So if I want to, I can just go ahead and grab the hex code right here on the side and then bring it into my game and edit the macro. You want to keep the 0x and then copy the hex code right after. And then after doing that, you can go ahead and save the macro and execute, and you should see the change in the glow effect. Now, we have the change here, but perhaps we want to add this macro to our list of presets to make it easier to use with DAE and the Cub module. That is also very simple to do. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure you give it a custom name so you remember which one it is. I'm going to just name it Color Pink Shift, and then you can save the macro. And the final step is the bottom line here. I'm going to comment out the token magic add update filters on selected because this part of the macro is what actually applies the filter. And instead, I'm going to add in this line token magic dot add preset. And here, funny glow can be whatever you want. I could probably use the same name as here just for keeping track of things. But whatever name it is, make sure it is unique because it's going to be added to the list of presets we saw for DAE and then execute the macro. We'll see it pop up. The FX has been successfully added to the preset library. After which you can go ahead and delete this line and uncomment that part so that you can use this macro as you used it before. And now we can see our new filter next to the macro token magic. So it has been added to our library of preset filters. If you don't see this here, just try a refresh and then take another look. These custom filters can also be applied via the Cub module. You'll just have to manually type it in, which I have done right here. Macro.TokenMagic, capital M, custom, color, pink, shift. So now when I apply the bless effect, we'll see the filter 
being applied as well. With that, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next part of this video, which is covering custom token animations. After adding in the custom token animations module, you'll see a new icon on the left hand side, the circle of dots. Go ahead and select a token and then click that icon. Next, we want to go and add a new animation. For my games, I typically use animations that are provided by JV2A, but you can use pretty much any asset you want. My intention here is to add an aura to this token, so I'm going to library TMFX out pulse circle and I'm going to select this one right here. After selecting, I have a few choices. The first thing I want to do is give it a name, which I'm just going to name it Aura Light. After doing that, you can decide the scale, which all of this can be updated later if you don't like the look. But I want to select Static Image. By selecting this, I'm making it so it will apply on the token rather than rotate around the token. And I can give it a tint if I want, which I'm going to give it a slight bluish tint right now. And I want to render it below the token and permanent on actor. Permanent on actor means that whenever I bring this actor onto the scene, I'll also have this animation be applied at the same time. And the final change I'm going to make is change the scale from 1 to 3. And then go ahead and create the effect. Which we can see applied right here. And it's very easy to remove on the left hand side. I can just go ahead and delete the effect there from the actor. Here is one more example of the aura with a template over top so you can see how far it extends. It is also very simple to set up an animation such as the one I have here of a stone orbiting the token. I just need to make sure I don't select static image and I need to change the variables as I desire, such as the number of copies. So if I change one to three, we'll see three stones orbit around my token. This could be very useful for certain spells such as Melf's Minute Meteors. Two final notes, one thing you can do with the animation picker is you can replicate these animations as macros, which I have done right here with the CTA or a light. And after having it as a macro, if you want, you can bring it onto the description of an item. So I have it right here. Let's go ahead and use this item and we'll see the macro appear in the chat. But first I'm going to delete the effect from this actor. After saving the macro in the description of an item, I'm going to go ahead and use that item look in the chat log, click the macro, and we can see the effect is applied to my character. And as a final note, CTA animations also interacts with the automated animations module. I've set up my shield here. When I use it, it is going to create a fog cloud. In order to do this though, I did need to have a damage roll, so I've just set it to zero, no damage, action type utility, because I think the animations rely on a damage roll being rolled at the same time. So if I use the shield, we're going to see the fog cloud appear. And what is handy about this is I also have the pop up here, remove CTA effect, rather than having to remove the effect on the left hand side. And we see it gradually fades out. That's where we're going to be finishing up for today. Hopefully you can use this setup to add more visual flair to your game, potentially distinguish more with your spells and abilities. I'll be putting links down in the description below to where you can find all of the animations I use. All of them come from JB2A. I'll also be putting a link to where you can find the codes so that you can bring in the token magic custom animations into your library. Well, thank you all for listening. And again, hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments.